Uh, I am Sam. And I'm Jake. And we're here today to show you a few of the recipes that we've used in previous sessions for Transition Town and the Let's Eat project and Confidence to Cook. Um, so I've done a number of workshops here. And I, I, I like to see myself as an idiometer. I'm the barometer of stupidity in the kitchen. So if I can do it, we probably all can. And Sam just tells me what to do, so yes. Yes, but you've also run workshops. I have run workshops, remarkably, and I've done them at the Forest Academy as well for some, some young folk up there. So yes, I've worked with Transition Town. And all the stuff that we do, that I've done, is all really simple. Because like I say, my experience of cooking is quite slender, unlike Sam. Not really, it's all easy stuff that, that we're doing today, but with a focus on mm -hmm. um, it being quick, it being simple, um, it being relatively cheap to run, but also about um, improving confidence to cook with local ingredients and also improving your health. So everything that we're doing today has got some sort of superfoods in it, but we're not talking strange exotic names no. from other countries. We're talking about things like the humble garlic. Garlic is a great superfood, and this is the first thing that I'm going to show what we're doing with it today. So we're gonna make a potato and garlic soup, um, but we're not just gonna chuck some garlic in it. We're going to make this smooth and caramelized and absolutely delicious before we squeeze it into the soup. Now, garlic is great because it's antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's got some antiviral properties as well. So it's a really good, healthy thing to eat lots of, regardless. And particularly social distancing, it's great because you can eat as much as you like and nobody cares. So all I'm gonna do with this, I've got a whole bulb of garlic here and I'm just gonna cut off the very top of it. We had Hot knife, that would be better. But you can see, whoop, if I don't pack it around too much, we've got all the, the cloves inside. And what I'm going to do is get a little bit of that, a little bit of oil. Chicken. <laughs> I'll try and work it. Put it in the foil and get a bit of olive oil. You can use any oil you like, really. All the garlic, you can see, if you can see the garlic, that's what you just want. So you just get the tips off, so you've got the juicy bits of the garlic, and that's what's gonna yep. dribble the oil on. So we're just, just dribbling a bit on. Whoa. So we just don't want it to burn everywhere. Oil on the garlic, there we go. And then we've got that, and then we're just gonna wrap it up in the foil. It will get a bit sort of crispy on the outside and that's fine because inside it's going to be really soft and oozy and sweet. Um, so we're just going to put it in a pan there and then into the oven for about three quarters of an hour, about 200 degrees or so. Yeah, that's the one that's on. I know, but I can't fit in. Ah. So we'll put the pan <laughs> into an oven that it fits and we'll leave it there for about three quarters of an hour and then we'll come back. Right, so while the, um, the garlic's doing, we're going to also do some a really nice simple pudding. It's the simplest pudding in the world. Really tasty, really enjoyable, great fun and simple to do. Basically, it's going to be a compote of fruit, which we'll talk about the fruit, and a kind of magical ice cream that isn't ice cream at all. All will be revealed. First of all though, I have to open Gilbert the fish. This is Gilbert the fish. And in there is a frozen banana. Frozen banana, and these are frozen gooseberries. These actually, we got these from their local up at Rafford, and they're last year's gooseberries, but they were frozen for us, and we've got a bag of those. So all we're doing just for the now is defrosting those. Out of Gilbert, we'll leave those a few minutes, and then we're gonna make a lovely gooseberry compote and ice cream. Right, now we're moving on to be making, to be making, I can't even speak English, to make most of the potato and garlic soup. Potatoes are just about coming to fruition round about now. So what I've done is cut up an onion, um, not in the chef special way because that's not how I was 
taught or learn how to cut an onion. You can cut an onion however you like. So just chop up an onion and I'll get this. I'm just heating a bit of oil in the pan here. This happens to be an olive oil because that's what we've got here today, but you can use any sort of oil really. The important thing is that it doesn't start smoking because once you once that mm. happens, it's, it's lost all its properties and that's when it becomes a bit nasty health-wise. Yes. So, that's just keep them away there. And we're gonna put in our onion. We've got our garlic in the oven. And we're gonna let these, it's quite, quite enough yet, let's have a try. Not quite, getting there though. Getting up a little bit. There we go. Yes, I've got a story for testing the heat of the oil, but I'm not going to tell it here. Well, there is another way you can do it. You get a wooden spoon and you literally put it in. And if the wooden spoon starts fizzing in the oil, which it now is, it's up to temperature. My mother used to spit. So well, I'd, that's I'd, beside the point. Yeah. So I'd always learned that. And I thought that's what you did. So when I went to university, I was going on to cook, even try and cook. I did the cooking in this shared accommodation with four other lads. About six weeks in, fella came out to breakfast and there was me, just about put the eggs in the frying pan and I spat in the frying pan. He said, what are you doing? Said, well, that, that's how you test how hot the oil is. He said, what, what? And he, I could see on his face that he suddenly realized that for six weeks, every meal I'd cooked, because it's all in a frying pan, I'd spat in the frying pan at the beginning. He didn't mind. <laughs> but I seriously thought, that's what you did. I, I, I've never learnt any better. Well, rather than spread potential <laughs> germs about, you can use a wooden spoon. Using a wooden spoon is, is, is better. Carry on just stirring that. So yeah, what yeah, I've yeah. got here I've got it, I've got it. are potatoes. These are locally grown potatoes. And most recipes for potato soup say to cut the skins off and peel them. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm an anti-peel person, particularly for potatoes. Firstly, these are organic potatoes. They have been cleaned, I've just washed them. But also the most nutrients in a potato are on the outer edges, to, right towards the skin. Um, so if you take off the skin and peel it, you're losing a lot of the mit vitamins as well as the fiber. So if you And you can, just give them a good scrub, don't you? Give them a good scrub. Yeah. And when you blitz your soup, yes, you'll have like fine bits in it. But what's wrong with that? Hmm? Nothing wrong with that in my way of thinking about things. So I'm just kind of roughly chopping up these potatoes. Any sort of bits that are a little bit bad or discoloured or whatever, you can cut out. Um, but otherwise, just, just, just leave them. I'm going to say nothing wrong with the skins. I think the only thing that I actually peel in terms of vegetables is garlic and onion, really. Everything else, pretty much you can eat, just need to scrub, scrub any yeah. dirt off the, off the surface. And particularly when you say, when you've got organic or homegrown produce, it just tastes good and feels good to be able to eat the whole thing. Mm. Well, like I say, it's got all the good stuff in it and the skin, I love it. Yep, absolutely. And even with the garlic, sometimes we'll roast the whole garlic cloves and as leave them do. as we're there, but, but leave them, them whole. And then if you do them for long enough, you, you can just suck the garlic out of the burnt husk of the garlic. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely lovely. So we've got about, we've got one onion frying away there in the oil. We've got about 600 grams of Woo! potato. As well as a chopping board thing And I didn't spit once, Sam. I'll turn it down. Well done. Well I know, done. I know. So they're frying up there. What we're going to do now is add some stock, about a litre worth of stock. So the cheap way of doing it, that I find, you add about a litre worth of water to it. So that's been frying on lovely. Then you get stock cube beyond powder. However you want to make your stock, um, you can obviously use a vegetable stock, although everything that we're doing here is vegetarian, vegan. And what I tend to do is just kind of sprinkle a bit in, like that. Um, 
You can adjust your seasoning later, but I always add to like a little bit of black pepper for that. Um, salt wise, I'm going to add a little bit, but that's just a little bit and see how it tastes later on. There's lots of salt and bouillon, even yeah. all, all bouillon's got salt in. Yeah, so only a tiny bit, but you do need, do you need salt. some salt to, need for flavour. And our bodies do need salt, not too much salt, markedly so, but we do need sodium. So, that I'm going to turn up till it's simmering and just let it simmer away for 20 minutes, half an hour, till the garlic's done and then we'll move on to actually sort of processing it a bit. Right, so that is, the water's almost getting hot. The key thing with this, if you want it to boil quicker and save energy, put a lid on it because you increase the pressure inside then it heats up a lot quicker and you don't have to use as much electricity, fuel, whatever to, to heat up what you're doing. So what we're going to do is bring it to the boil, let it simmer and we'll come back to it later. Right, next thing we're going to do, again really simple, great fun and one of those ones that you can mess about with because it really doesn't matter, whatever your preference is, you, you can change it, you can vary it and it's just hummus. Uh, and you get the stuff in the supermarket, which is fine, but this is like homemade stuff, and it's, like I say, you can enhance it in whatever way you like. If you've got a food processor, it's dead easy. If you haven't, it's the same thing, you've got to mix it all up. That does take a lot more effort, but it's exactly the same process. But we'll do it in a food processor, just to show you and how easy it is. The best thing is, you just put it in a food processor and whiz it. So, can of chickpeas, that's your base of hummus obviously, is, is the chickpeas. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna drain these, and I was asking Sam about this before, because some things that I cook, I'll drain the chick, I'll wash the chickpeas, sort of wash the starchy water off them, but for this you don't need to. What we do need to do is drain them, but we're gonna keep that, that water, because we'll use some or all of that later. That is aquafaba. So, were far but no yeah. less. So if you're searching or super food. the tinterwebs and looking for all sorts of strange um, recipes for vegan meringues and mousse and all sorts of things, basically it's that juice that you can use to whisk up. And if you whisk it up with sugar, you can actually make vegan meringue. So there's an egg alternative. Aquafaba, aquafaba, you heard it here first? Well, I heard it here first. <laughs> so, we've got chickpeas in there, that's the basis. And then, I did chop these up earlier, that's just a couple of cloves of garlic. Now, here's where you can start varying what you do. Some folk like garlic, some folk don't. You really want to have some in there, but if you like garlic, put in more garlic. So, we've got chickpeas in there. You don't have to chop it up. Put the garlic in there. No, well, you, you don't actually, because it will go in the food processor. That's very true, that is very true. Now, we want a bit of oil in there. There's oil in the, in the chickpeas. This time... It's more in the tahini than the chickpeas. And the yes, yeah, sorry, there's, yeah, there's lots of oil in there. This time, the oil that I would use, I'd always use a, a, a ver, um, olive oil for this one, because you're gonna actually, you're gonna actually taste this, unlike in the soup where it's just, uh, you're just frying your onions, because this isn't gonna cook as such. You will get a flavor of this. I've got a teaspoon. No. Tablespoon. Yeah. Tablespoon. Yeah. Good splurge. Good splurge. And again, once we've whizzed this up first time, we'll taste it and we can change how it looks, how it tastes. So the next thing is the tahini. Now, tahini is great stuff. It's, what is it, sesame seed? Sesame seed paste. Sesame seed paste. I've been doing this for 10 minutes and I know when I open this up, the oil will not have mixed with the sesame because it, once the oil separates, it's quite hard to get it to, uh, to mix in. Ooh, it's a posh one. Yeah. You can get light or dark tahini, and the only real difference is that with dark tahini, the sesame seeds are toasted first, so you get a deeper, richer sort of flavor to it, whereas the light tahini is just using like the raw sesame seeds the untoasted ones. I tend to prefer my hummus with a light tahini, but you can make yeah, it with dark, again, you can, yeah. you know. Actually, that's 10 minutes well spent. It's actually quite well mixed. But it, honestly, it's really hard to get this to mix up. So what I always do as well, 
is once I've opened it, I'll give it a good stir with a fork just to try and mix it up. But that's not bad at all. Yeah, looking good. But that is a bit of a pain, that process. Mm. We're going to use some of that later on in a dressing. Are we? Yes, we are. So it says three tablespoons. We can use about three tablespoons. Which Two or three, whatever. It's very messy. Oh. There's lots of different recipes for hummus, and I think you'll find your own sort of yeah. combination. These are kind of the essential ingredients. Chickpeas, tahini, oil, garlic, garlic lemon juice. Lemon, lemon juice. Quantities. A bit more then. A cheeky tahini. Cheeky tahini. Beautiful. Now, lemon juice. Uh, again, to taste. Yep. You can use the, the bottled stuff, fresh lemons, yeah. whatever you've got. Whatever you've got. Lime juice as well, gives a slightly different flavour, but no problem using lime juice. So what I'll do, I'll start off with one tablespoon. But we ain't finished yet. Bit of salt, unlike when Sam was doing the, because we're not cooking this, we won't use um, rock salt, of course. There's a teaspoon there. Pinch. <laughs> pinch. Pinch. Two pinches. Couple of pinches of salt, but yeah, use the fine stuff, use the fine stuff. And then, um, that's it, isn't it? Because what I would do, what I would do now, again, and it's like I say, you just do whatever you like to do. I would always put in some, uh, yeah, I'll show you, it's not. Excellent. Yeah. I'd always put in some, um, oh, pulse. I'd always put in some chilli, because I like, I like chilli. But some people don't. And also, if the beauty of this is, the stuff that you get in the uh, supermarket is generally really, paint, really smooth. And I like it thick, and to have some lumps of the actual chickpea in. But again, it's entirely up to you. So what we do now, after a wee bit of that, I would have a wee taste. That is quite chunky. That's quite chunky. Um, definitely need more worry. And it's also quite claggy, quite thick. So, I'll take a wee bit of that. Stick that in. And also, Sorry? It's starting to go. It is. And also, when I tasted it, for me, I'm thinking that could do with a little bit more lemon juice. And this is the beauty. Once you start doing this, you can add stuff, can't take it away obviously, uh, and do it to taste. And like I say, I'll always put in chilies. Right. Some so of the um, supermarkets are doing like a piri piri hummus or caramel onion hummus Thank or you, red pepper hummus. So you can add whatever you fancy to it really. I think sometimes just like mm. the few curry spices are quite nice. Mm. It's quite a chunky one, isn't it? It is a chunky one. I can make it less chunky, so. No. That, that's good. That is good. Yeah. Texture wise. Smoother. Smoother, well yes, she likes she likes smooth and I'm afraid she's got a bit of rough. Smooth enough, darling. No, no, it's your hummus. It's my hook, thank you, thank you. I'll take control of the hummus. No, seriously, it's great fun to do and I think you had some pepper crab, didn't you? Pepper crab, did you say? Uh, I don't know, but I, yeah. To make it look pretty. Quite often the, um, the professional chefs will sprinkle a bit of paprika and a bit more olive oil over the top of it, just mm. to give it that look of something a bit more professional. So paprika, depends if you like paprika, you can, it's up to you. But what are you going to do with your hummus, Jake? Ooh, I tell you what I'm going to do, there's lots of things you do with hummus, but one of the really nice things you can do it, if we slide across here. Excellent, I'll get, I'll get the gooseberries out of the way. 
they're, they're not long. They're not long for cooking. Yeah, one of the best ways of eating hummus is just to eat it up with some raw vegetables. So all I've got there is a carrot, and again, the best part of the carrots on the outside. These are organic carrots. They look wonderfully a bit. Well, they, they, they don't look like the carrots in the shop often, but they're so so tasty. And all I'm going to do is cut this into some strips without cutting my fingers on this very blunt knife. And you've got your own little vegetable fork. I'll give you a vegetable fork, Sam. Well, thank you. And it's saying any old, any old veg. Also, I've got a beautiful, beautiful organic cucumber. I think it goes also locally grown. Locally grown. This, yeah, this stuff. This stuff. Talk about plate miles. These are these are plate feet. Some of this stuff. It's, it's it's walked to us. You know, it's not come far at all. So all you've got is just a lump of fresh cucumber, a lump of carrot, and it's a great sharing, dipping. You know, it's it's. It's a starter or whatever, but it's, it's fun. Good hummus. Thank you. Mm. Here endeth the second mm. lesson. Just going to mention. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Just going to mention about having the garlic raw, and that if oh, once yes, you've sorry. chopped up garlic, the allicin substance in it oxidizes with the air or becomes the, the, the substance which is really good at fighting infections and stuff. So actually, although we're, we're baking our garlic for the soup, to actually eat garlic raw, and you don't necessarily feel like you're eating raw garlic. Yeah, not in this, no. No, and it's, you know, Especially it's allowed to get to the air, it produces the allicin, all the rest of it, and it's, yeah, just really good for you. Didn't Many years ago, I worked in Southern Italy, and I was collecting grapes in the vineyards, and uh, the local farm labourers would stop for lunch, and they'd have half a bottle of wine, big chunk of bread, and then a little bit of cheese or a little bit of salami and a whole bulb of garlic. And after the end of the meal, they'd eat the bulb of garlic and they said it's, it's for health. I can't remember what they said, it was in Calabrian dialect. But it was like cheers and they'd say for health and they'd eat the garlic. And they did look pretty healthy. <laughs> right, so here we go with the simplest ice cream in the world, which I've never made, never even heard of. Sam said it was that simple that I could show you right now and nothing could possibly go wrong. We shall see. So, we got this out of Gilbert earlier. This was our frozen banana. So it's gone black, because they always go black in the freezer apparently. Chucked in the freezer. It was rock hard when we took it out. Took it out of Gilbert about half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago. Still a little bit hard, but getting rather soft. So all we do now is peel this thing, which I'm not, entirely certain how this is going to be because like I say some of it's very squidgy and some of it is quite hard but oh yes it's, it's rather sensual actually this banana did I say that out loud here we go yeah some of it's still a bit frozen some of it's all gloopy so if you get any bananas that are going off and you're so fed up of lockdown banana bread, <laughs> just chuck them in the freezer and then it stays yellow and lovely inside. Beautiful. And now then, I wasn't expecting that, Sam. I wasn't yeah. expecting that to be so beautiful, but it is beautiful. Now, sugar-free ice cream. We, we take this, without dripping any, chuck it in there. Ooh, ooh. Thank you, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I would offer my apron, but... Yeah, 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 I, I would. I, I know where I've been. And now we're going to whiz this up until... How's that looking, Sam? It's looking pretty good. Any more? Let the, the maestro, let the maestro have a wee look. I'm just going to give it a little poke. No, I would say... Yeah, because you've still got a slightly firm... So what are we looking for, Sam? We're looking for um, a consistency not too dissimilar to ice cream that's starting to defrost a little bit. If we'd have left it, yeah, to be frozen a little bit more, I think it'd be all right. I'm just going to try it, actually. Yeah. Mm. So obviously, it's got no sugar in it, but in reality, it's got loads of sugar in it, hasn't it? Natural sugars. Yeah, natural sugars, but no yeah, sugar. No added sugar. And I just don't believe that all you can do is whiz up a banana 
Ah, oh, it's a revelation. That's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> She's not lying. No. That's brilliant. That's what, brilliant. I mean, what you could do is actually add, say, cinnamon or other spices mm. to it if you wanted a different flavour, a bit of cocoa powder to make your chocolate for ice cream. But, yeah, what you're going to be adding later Yes, on it's my compote. Yes, which will give a kind of a tart contrast it will. to the sweetness of the banana. That's beautiful. So now with that, I, now just put that back in the freezer. We'll, if you wanted to make it firmer, yes, you could put it back in the freezer and then whisk it up again. Uh -huh. Or ideally, what we'd have done is just let yeah. it frozen and not let it defrost so much mm -hmm. when we whizzed it, and then it's just ready to serve. Just ready to serve, so that. Really like that, it's still really cold. It's absolutely gorgeous. So we'll put this aside, and then yep. when we come back to the end, and we'll just do the compote, which is really quick, we'll add that to it. <gasps> so, excellent. Thank you. Go ahead. Right, we're now going to get our garlic out of the oven. The moment of truth, madame. Yes. Can't oh, go wrong, can't go wrong with garlic. garlic. is so good. So this has been in there for just over 45 minutes. Um, let's have a look at it so carefully. It's like Christmas, opening your presents. Even then, when you know what you've got is exciting. Right, so you can see it's got slightly caramelised at the top there and if you're careful this it is going to be quite hot but if we you can tell already it's really soft each yeah. each clove and what we're going to do that's just come off that's just the, the um, outer skin so we've left with these beautiful some? soft pieces oh it's very hot take it off with? Mm. what's that tweet on sorry oh Sweet, soft garlic. So this is going to go into this that has been simmering away. I turned it off about mm. five minutes ago, so it's just going to stay warm. So that's all right. I mean, then you can either separate them there or you can squeeze them straight into the pot. Yeah. What I am now going to do, sorry, just down there in a second. Oh, it's We've divine. got our potatoes, which are nicely cooked. So rather than use a gadget, you can use like a handheld wither, you could use a blender, all sorts. I've got potato matter. So not only do you get all the health benefits of a local healthy soup, you actually get the exercise of mashing up potatoes. I love things like the hummus as well, because you can make it very smooth, but I like to know what's in my soup and stuff. I like it to put a few chunks in. But you know, the, the, the smoother you like it, the more exercise you get. But uh, yeah, you've got control. Oh, these, these, are just, these are just coming out perfect. And depending on how thick or thin you like the soup, if you like a really thick soup, just put a bit less of the stock water in at the start. Um, and if you like or prefer a thinner soup, then you can add, add a bit more. Oh, very cool. So this. This is uh, looking rather nice and mashed, an initial mashing. So before we check seasoning, we're going to get this garlic in there. So this takes the bitterness out of the garlic as well. Oh. And just it doesn't, take, it. doesn't take the heat out, it comes straight out the oven. No, you can let it cool for longer yeah. to save your fingers. Oh, 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 oh. Those bits are there. perfect, those yep. bits are perfect, those bits are perfect. Um, if you're going to blitz it, the garlic, of course, would be more spread throughout the soup. I mean, these are just kind of falling away out of the... They are. The Once they're hot, it would take seconds because they really are perfect. They are yeah. perfect. And it's like, you know, how long was in for? 45 minutes? Yeah. Hour? Be okay? It's, it's yeah. not a science, this stuff. It, it's pretty robust. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But say so roasting it, roasting it whole with that little bit of oil yeah. just to... Perfect. Bring out the sweetness and the yumminess of it all. So, I'm just going to use a spoon to taste where we're up to seasoning wine. Watch, I'm going to wash my hands. You're going to wash your hands. I'm going to wash my hands. Oh, I thought it. Mmm, now for me, possibly a little bit more black pepper actually for me, my taste buds. Um, for me, it's salty enough, but obviously 
And I think with soups, actually, if you make them slightly undersalted, then once everybody's got their own soup, they can adjust it according to their own taste and palate. So, we've got potatoes growing up here at Transition Town. We do use them. These potatoes are, are still local ones. Um, we've got garlic. One of the garlics was grown just up in Rafford, so it's locally grown garlic. Um, I used to grow garlic when I lived in Nairn, which is just fantastic. Um, quite often takes two years to grow garlic. A lot of varieties sprout one year and then really produce the bulbs the year after. But it, yeah, it's easily grown in this climate. And there we go. So that is our soup. And awesome. we have the bulb there, Beautiful. don't we? We do. We do. We can dish up a bit. Dish up a bit. Yep. Do we have a ladle? We'll get a ladle Thank and we'll get a couple of spoons. And again, like with most soups, you can make it, you can freeze it, you can sort of like re reheat it. It's quite easy to do. With the hummus, you can freeze it in smaller tubs and then defrost it a little bit at a time. So if you think that a whole can is too much, just divide it up, put it in the freezer, defrost it as you, as you need it. Um, the actual pad thai sauce, yeah. Um, you could freeze, but it's it's it lasts well. So once you've got it massaged in your vegetables, it will last as long as your vegetables last in the fridge. So a good, I'd say, three to four days yeah, yeah. for that. Um, but yeah, the soup you can make up. Um, and those colder evenings, nothing like a bit of homemade soup. And I'll tell you, you can see that this one is quite chunky. And it, you can see the little flecks of the skin, mm -hmm. which I think is great. But if you wanted it very smooth and creamy, just glitz it more or mash it more. Depending on what you've got. Never mind that. What's it taste like? Okay. Well, good chatties. Them good chatties. Mm. That's delicious. Simple. Simple. Simple, Simple food. Mmm. Right, so we uh, we made our fabulous banana ice cream. It's an ice cream at all, but it was a frozen banana. It worked absolutely fantastically. And all we're going to make is the simplest pudding in the world, which is like a compote, which is, I don't really know what a compote is. It's like a jam. But basically, the beauty of this is, well, two things, really. One is we're going to use those local fruits that we had, and you can use any kind of fruit. So this is the time of year where you can get local fruits. This will work with any kind of fruit. That's one of the beauties, you can get it locally. The other one is like a jam is generally at least half of it is sugar. Whereas this is the kind of other way around. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use, say one lot of uh, the fruit to half the amount of sugar. And we don't need to use sugar, do we? No, we can use other sweeteners instead. So you could, for example, use your vegan honey. Um, you could use um, other sweeteners, natural sweeteners like stevia from the stevia leaf. Um, you can do it, get that as a powder. You could use that instead. Um, you could use any any other sweetening thing. You can even use dates. Dates is quite That's a good one, particularly yeah. something like strawberries, for example. If you've got strawberries, you chuck them in the freezer. Oh, what to do with them? Use half the amount of strawberries weight-wise as dates and then you've got really really sweet sort of sticky jam-like um, consistency thing which goes great with things like ice cream but you can use it as you might use jam on whatever else. So whoa dropped it. Now I like using cups they're really good this is this is really basic so what we've got are our gooseberries you don't need to do anything with these gooseberries I'll say to Sam you do read some recipes where they cut the ends off the gooseberry which would take you all day, there's one, um, and is kind of unnecessary, yeah. especially because you're cooking it all up. So if I use cups, because that's just a good way of getting the proportion going, well, can I have a wooden spoon, Sam, please? Mm -hmm. The beauty about cups is you, it's very easy to get a ratio. So that's two cups. We use the whole thing because they were defrosted and they're not going to go anywhere else. So that's about three cups of fruit. So we've got three cups of our fruit which is going to mean one and a half cups of the sugar. 
Now you can use some of the recipes, they say a thin, thin stuff. What's it? Icing? Caster sugar. Caster sugar. Some of them say caster sugar, but you don't need to. The, right. the reason for using caster sugar generally is that it's just quicker to dissolve. Right. Because um, it's smaller, smaller particles. You get this heated up. And then one squished gooseberry in the bag, so I'm just going to eat it. I've been eating them. Now these gooseberries, where well, they came out of being frozen, they still are a little bit frozen. So what we might do, so I don't want to put sugar in before these start to, to go a bit mushy. And they're a bit more robust than I had hoped. Yeah. One thing about gooseberries is most people tend to cook with them rather than just eat them. But there's, there's nothing wrong at all with eating raw gooseberries. No. They might be a bit tart for your taste buds, some of them. These ones are quite sweet, actually. The, these were amazing. Apparently last year, this year apparently is not a gooseberry year, so I was told by someone who knows. But these came from last year, and last year there was gooseberry-tastic bonanza. And yeah. actually, Sam, while, while we, while I'll, I'll just fiddle about with this, and if you show folk, and we're not great foragers, but we just went out for a walk yesterday with the dog, and uh, we found all this booty. Yeah. Like I say, we're not great foragers, we're, we're not Ray Mears, and we weren't actually on a mission to get stuff, but this is the stuff we bumped into this time. Yeah, absolutely glorious. So the, these are elderberries, yeah? This is what happens um, after you get the elderflowers. A lot of people harvest elderflowers to make elderflower cordial, um, and these are the elderberries. And you'll see a lot of the kind of... Um, Products for upper respiratory infections include black elderberry in them. Yeah, the sambucol is one part of the Latin name. Because there have been studies that show that these are really good at fighting upper respiratory tract viral infections. So that's why you see a lot of these. Strangely relevant. Yeah, they they, <laughs> they taste lovely, but they're you know they're very good for you as well as an immune helping fruit. So to make up some jam or some compote with black elderberries in them. Great way to try and stay healthy. We've got those. We've got in here a mixture of wild blueberries and brambles, oh. blackberries. Um, yeah, they're called blaberries around here. Blaberries, right? yeah, yeah. I know all them sorts of bilberries. Wimberries were I was. Wimberries, yeah. <laughs> Basically a wild blueberry. So these are the soft round ones. Again. They're um, coming to the end now, aren't they? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So the the fruits with the sort of like the blue and black colours, they're they're good anti-inflammatory fruits. These are wild cherries or geens, sometimes known as bird cherries. Those are fantastic they, this year. Oh, they're just so tasty. So the same, when they're when they're that black, they're almost they're almost alcoholic. They're almost wrong. They're, they're so full of flavour. Yeah. Beautiful. They're absolutely delicious. And cherries, again, really good anti-inflammatory fruit, um, used in a lot of preparations um, against gout, uh, against arthritis, because, yeah, the, so the black, black, lovely cherries. We've got red currants here, wild red currants. Yeah, we're lucky to get those, because they're, they're finished in most places, but I, yeah, yep, lucky and get those. Wild gooseberries, so not yeah. the um, cultivated ones. So the fruits are a bit smaller, than the cultivated mm. ones that we're using. So these are just, <laughs> say, just picked from the wild and the flavour is lovely. And they're going in as well. <laughs> right, cool. Um, we've got round berries here. Um, I've never actually used them to make round jelly, um, but that's, that's what you use. And all of these good sources of vitamin C as well to help, help fight any infections that come along. Got some more elderberries there. Uh, we've got a stick of rhubarb somewhere, which I actually foraged from my garden. So right into the yeah, right into the uh, late summer, getting rhubarb. Yeah. We've got apples here. These were from these little ones here. Yeah. They're from they're a wild, really interesting. wild apple tree. Later on in the year, they they really get quite tasty, and they they almost taste like a pear. It's a tree near me, and. I, they're apples, but they, 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 like I say, they, they taste like a pear, really interesting. Yep. And then these apples are from your garden, aren't they? My garden, yeah. Yep. Different trees, slightly different apples. This one's probably more used as a cooking apple, just because it's a lot tarter and a lot harder. 
that one, I think, more of a crossover apple. That there one. was, yeah, they're yeah. so tasty. I yeah. like to eat them, but they're a bit yeah. sharp. And the last thing we found were a number of bullet mushrooms. Yes. Yes, you know your mushrooms. I know your mushrooms a little bit. I, I know what I know. Yes. I'm very careful, obviously. Don't, don't, don't pick mushrooms if you don't know what you're no. looking at. No, indeed. If but you... this is a fantastic part of the world for them. Uh, it really is. I couldn't believe it when I moved up here. The woods are full of excellent mushrooms. Actually, don't pick them unless you know. But if you do know, there's a bonanza. There's a bonanza. Yeah. So this was literally just on yeah. what, an hour and a half walk. Right? Yeah, we're we're not we're not great. You know, we don't. Yeah, but this time of year, you know, the even us. free fruit particularly is bountiful. So yeah. Right, and exactly. as for our compost. If this was the telly, I would say, here's what I prepared earlier. Because unfortunately, these were quite frozen and I think there's more water in them than there would have been. What I would do with this, I'd leave it now for 15 minutes just simmering away and it would go down and it would be beautiful. But I'm afraid what we've got here is just far too much liquid. Um, the amount of sugar's in there, so I, I put half the amount of sugar to, to fruit and it will taste lovely. But it's not going to for a while, so I'm, I'm sorry about that one. As a demonstration, it's no good. But honestly, all you do, chuck the fruit in, chuck the sugar in, let it go to so this nice, mushy consistency. But this, at the minute, it, it's, it's very watery. So like I say, you just leave it there. And then you'd have it with your beautiful your banana, ice cream. banana ice cream. So yeah, apologies yeah, that we can't. Taste it though, regardless. Taste it regardless, yes. Yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't done that. So they're starting to get really mushy, mm. but they could get mushier. They will get mushier. Yeah. And just, it's going to be quite hot now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Because they are oh, beautiful wow. gooseberries, they are beautiful gooseberries. Um, and I could quite easily have less sugar again. Come on. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I, I just did two to one, but actually sounds quite right. You, you could easily do with the sugar yeah. there. And certainly if you were going to do something... fruit as well. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that yeah. if you were going to do it with, say, the oh. Gein cherries, then, yeah, minimal sugar because they're so sweet. Strawberries, again, are so sweet. Yeah. There's no point adding any sugar. And maybe to say the sweetness of a few dates to give with that, um, the thickening... Um, You're right, it's faster, faster, yeah. Red currants again are quite tart, so you might want slightly more with those. Blackberries, I think it depends when you pick them. It does, the, it the, depends on the blackberry. Yeah. They're amazing, the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Blueberries again, they're usually quite sweet, so very little needed, if any at all. Yeah. And simply the point of yeah, heating something up, letting the juices come out, letting the water from the juices evaporate, means everything's going to get stickier together. So, you know, why spend money on big pots of jam when you can make your own lovely? Yeah, and in, in minutes, in minutes rather than there. Right, beautiful. So yeah, sorry about that. I can't show you what it's going to be taste, look like, but... Too much we know. Time. 